Hey, I'm Rob for JustTheRoad.com. I'm going to show you how to play Dungeons and Dragons Adventure Begins. This is a game for two to four players. It's designed by Hennig Ludvigsen and Benjamin Raynal and it's published by Hasbro. Players cooperatively work their way through a dungeon, overcoming obstacles and defeating monsters. Defeat the gatekeeper at the end of the dungeon to win. But first begin your adventure with this channel by hitting subscribe and if you're already on this quest your goal is to leave a comment and hit the share button. On to setup. First choose a journey. Pick one of the boss tiles and get the three related gatekeeper cards. Return the rest to the box. Get the dungeon board that matches the boss symbol. Each board is made up of six spaces. Three core spaces in the middle, two monster spaces to the side and the gatekeeper space at the end. Put the boss in the stand and put it on the gatekeeper space on the board. Connect the other three dungeon boards in any order. The board furthest away from the boss standee will be known as board 1. Put the gatekeeper number 1 card face down next to board 1 near the flat edge behind the gatekeeper space on that board. Put card 2 under the next board and card 3 under the final board. Shuffle the four adventure decks. Put the adventure deck with a symbol matching the first board in the deck holder. Put the d10 and clip in the top. Give it to the oldest player who will start the game as a DM, the dungeon master. Shuffle the item deck and put the gold next to it. Players each get a plastic health tracker with health set to 10. Each player also chooses a hero and takes their 5 tiles, matching 20 sided dice and a reference card. Players choose one side of the hero tile and slot it in the health tracker. Choose either side of one of the two personality tiles and slot that in too. Finally, choose one of the two combat tiles. Make sure it's set to the level 1 side and slot that in. Return any unused hero tiles to the box. Players place their hero mini on the first base of the first dungeon board. Players then choose and pick any one backpack card. These cards show you what equipment your character is carrying that you may need to use during your adventure. With setup complete, the players take turns. If all players are on a core space, the DM draws an adventure card and places it in the deck holder, artwork facing the other players. The DM reads a story text at the top of the card to the party. If it's a scenario, the blue cards, all players including the DM unless otherwise stated, follow the instructions on the call to action. If the card calls for the DM to roll for the outcome, they should use the 10 sided dice. For example, for when swords to fly, the DM will roll for each player to determine the outcome of the player trying to avoid a floating sword. If it's a monster, the orange cards, the players will battle. The DM will place the damage clip on the monster's max HP. And if the monster has any strengths or weaknesses listed, the DM will read these to the party. For example, the fire elemental is resistant to weapons, so each weapon attack will subtract 5 from the rolled result. Heroes in combat take turns clockwise around the table attacking the monster. If more than one hero is engaged in combat, each participating hero rolls their 20 sided die for initiative. And whoever rolls the highest will go first and play will continue around the table. Players will choose the attack or special ability they wish to use. If the hero wishes to declare an attack, they must declare one and then roll their 20 sided die. For example, the rogue can use the basic attack called sneak attack which needs 5 plus on the d20 roll and deals 1 damage or the short sword basic attack which needs 12 plus but deals 2 damage. They can also use their creative attack by describing how they use their environment to their advantage then rolling the die and applying the result. If the hero rolls the shown number or higher, their attack is successful. The monster takes the listed damage for that attack by reducing their health using the slider. Anytime a hero rolls a 20 when attacking, they can add plus 1 damage to their attack. And if a hero wants to use their special ability, after declaring their intention to do so, they follow the instructions on their card. For example, the outlaw rogue has sneak attack, allowing them to use a basic or creative attack as an extra bonus attack. Each character may only use their special ability once per dungeon board. And if the monster is still alive, the monster will then attack the hero that just attacked it. The DM rolls for the monster using the black 10 sided die and says how many HP, if any, the hero loses. For example, on a result of 3 to 6, the fire elemental will deal 1 damage. If a hero's attack hits with a stun ability, showing the dizzy monster symbol, the monster won't be able to attack that player back. Combat then moves to the next hero around the table. If the DM is involved in the combat themselves, they will roll for both themselves and for the monster. When a monster has zero health it is defeated, the hero that delivered the final blow will describe how they defeated the monster. The DM will distribute gold and item cards listed on that monster to all players on that space. For example, the fire elemental gives one gold and one item card to each player on that space. If at any point a hero's HP drops to zero, they are knocked out. 
And if you are knocked out during combat, you do not take part in combat at all for the rest of that monster card. You also don't receive any gold or items for the rest of your party defeating the monster. Once combat is over, a knocked out player must trade all of their gold to regain 5 hit points and continue playing. And if you don't have any gold, another player can donate one piece of gold to save you. In addition to earning items through combat, you can purchase them outside of combat. Pay 3 gold to the supply, draw 3 item cards and choose one. Shuffle the cards you did not choose back into the item deck. Item cards can be used during combat to increase a hero's damage or block a monster's attacks. For example, Axe of the Dwarvish Lords can be activated to deal 2 damage, and the Spider Cloak can be used to defend against one attack. And an item can only be used once per dungeon board and will be flipped face down to show that it's been used. When you move on to the next board, you flip them back face up, ready to use again. And a hero can use multiple item cards per combat, but only one card per attack or block. Item cards that increase damage can only be added if the attack is successful to begin with. And also, heroes can give golden items to any other player at any time, for any reason. If a player has 5 gold, they can level up any time outside of combat. To do so, return 5 gold to the supply and flip the combat tile to the side labelled level 2, and reset the HP to 10. And after you complete a call to action or combat on a card, the DM will read the resolution of that card and then put it to the bottom of the deck. Now each hero in the party moves their mini one space forward down the path. If all heroes stay on the core path, repeat the steps in this section. If any heroes move to a monster space, heroes who move to the next core space must stop and wait for them. First the monster space is resolved, the DM finds the next monster card in the adventure deck and places it in the deck holder. Heroes on the monster space must defeat that monster and then rejoin their party on the next core space. And the newly reformed party will continue on the next core space as described earlier. Now do note if not all players are on the monster space, the role of the DM will rotate left to the first player who is not on the monster space. Other than that, the role of the DM will move clockwise to the next person after every card is revealed. When the party reaches the last space of the dungeon board, the deck holder passes clockwise as normal but the DM doesn't draw a card from the deck. Instead, the DM takes the gatekeeper card you place beside that space during setup. Play through the scenario or battle the monster on the gatekeeper card to finish the board and move to the next dungeon board. Remember to flip face down item cards face up when moving to a new board. When you start a new dungeon board, take the current adventure deck out of the deck holder and replace it with the corresponding adventure deck for your new board. And once you've reached the last space on the last dungeon board, it's time to face the boss. On the back of the boss tile are the attack actions and HP tracker for the boss. The DM clips the damage tracker to the boss tile at its max HP. And heroes take turns in clockwise order battling the boss using the regular combat rules. And once you've defeated the boss, you win the game. The player who delivered the final blow to the boss will describe how they did it and then read the victory text on the back of the boss tile. And that's how you play Dungeons and Dragons Adventure Begins. Thanks for watching, remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video goes live. You can follow me on Twitter, Insta, Twitch and YouTube at JesterTheRogue and find the blog at JesterTheRogue.com. I've been Rob aka JesterTheRogue, I'll see you soon.